What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style. Today we are continuing the series of boots that I have sold or am selling. Uh, this is the one pair that at least as of the filming of this video has not been sold or have not been sold. Um, but they are in the process of being sold. And I still have a lot of positive things to say about these boots, so I'm going to get into that right now. So. Like the last uh, boots that I filmed, my Flame Panda boots, these are also made in China. Um, and I know some people have a problem with that, but again, what I have a problem with is when things are outsourced in order to save money. So is that the case with some products made in China? Sure. But is that the case here? No, absolutely not. Like with Flame Panda, this is an all Chinese brand. It was made in China from people from China and it's you know employing Chinese people. It's all domestic basically. Okay, and it's made for it's made where it's made because they want people to you know get good at this craft and make great boots in China. Okay, so yeah, I don't really have any issue with that whatsoever. I think that's fantastic. I the more countries that start making great high quality handmade hand welted boots, the better. You know, the more you see that, the, the happier I am. So I'm happy to support something like this. So. These are my iron boots, 5515 in Italian rough out leather. So there's some things I really like about these boots and a couple of things that I really don't like about them. First things first, they are made from an Italian rough out leather. I thought this was suede at first because it's such a fine nap to it. I, hopefully you can see that here and if not, you know, I should include some pictures here and there. These are it's a very fine nap and it basically feels like suede and it's not suede I, I did check on that it's not actually suede it's just kind of sanded down and the thing is with iron boots that i really actually have come to like about them and this translates into the comfort as well as the leather that they choose and that is that the owner his idea is that he wants these boots to be city boots, really. They're supposed to look like, you know, more classic work style boots or whatever. They are in that amakaji, raw denim, heritage menswear, whatever sort of thing you want to talk about, okay? That is what these are styled as, but they are supposed to be easier to wear for people wearing them in the city. Not that they're not supposed to be durable. I mean, they feel pretty darn durable. As much as the flame pandas, no, but they're not supposed supposed to be they're a different thing okay and I like how they just kind of are leaning into that and I think they are doing a good job of that first of all this leather is nice it's soft it's flexible it's not the thickest it's not like thin and flimsy but it's definitely not as thick as other leathers that I've handled it's not as you know stiff as other le leathers that I've handled in this you know sort of style of boot but it still feels nice I mean it feels like it's, it feels like a dress boot leather more then it does feel like an actual like tough rough out leather but that's what they're going for and if that's what they're going for they've achieved that it does feel like a nice leather they also you may notice these boots have very very tight stitching very very high spi throughout um very nicely finished uh edges and heels and everything they they do a fantastic job of that um, they use a sort of day night copy, their own sort of version of day night. Um, I do wish that this was a half sole rather than a full sole, and I wish they chose to copy anything other than day night, sort of, because I just think day night is trash. But these actually feel a little bit better than day night, because most of the time I've noticed the day night copies I like more than day night. I just can't stand day night. The original day night soles, I think day night makes other stuff that I think is decent. It's just that. The circular grip things, they don't work, okay? But, otherwise these are pretty good. I mean, they're hand sewn welted, very, very good. Uh, I th the cost for these, I think, is now around $600, which is a pretty solid-ish deal for what these are. And the, they're hand sewn welted, which is very good, and very, very tight stitching on the outsole. Very high SPI there. I believe that is done by hand as well, if I'm not mistaken, although that could change. And the materials all seem very nice. The insole material is interesting. These feel very soft and fairly flexible. 
you could see the difference with the flame pan is it's not these aren't the thickest they fairly flexible but not nothing synthetic it's all you know besides the rubber outsoles obviously but that's a given otherwise they're it's all natural materials except for i think it's a steel shank but okay you get my point they feel fairly soft and sort of squishy in the insoles and so for if you're newer to boots and you want a more city style casual boot this is this worth three times the price of a pair of Thursdays? Yes, I think absolutely it is. Um, now, not everybody that is looking at Thursdays is going to spend $600 on a pair of boots and they're a different style and all that. I get that. But if you're somebody who's in that sort of market range and you're looking for something that's supposed to be... One of the things Thursday markets is that their boots are supposed to be softer and like more flexible and an easier transition from sneakers into boots. These, I think, hit that mark while still being actual like serious boots and I think that's impressive while still using all natural materials and everything like that they do a great balance of that now what's the impact on the long-term wear I don't know because this is not a pair that I'm going to be wearing any longer because I am selling them but I think it's going to be better than something like the you know pour on insoles that Thursday and other brands have used as well okay I mean uh, some Indonesian brands have or are still using that stuff I hope they stop I know some of them have already which is good um I think uh, Mark Albert used to use that stuff when I think he stopped as well, which is good. So I'm glad that a lot of, you know, boot enthusiasts are pushing back on that whole issue of using synthetic materials. The leather is genuinely just better. And Iron Boots is doing that. Okay, so that's good. That's something I really like about them, but they're still soft and flexible. So if you're looking for something kind of easier to ease into, not as hardcore as like NYX or Wesco or Weiss or even Red Wing or Flame Panda, this is what you want to go for then, I think. Um, and everything feels pretty high quality. I mean, the heel counters are nice and hard, no issues with that. The leather, like I said, feels nice. I think they're fully lined, which feels nice as well. I mean, I don't really care about the lining that much, but a lot of people do. Um, and the overall construction quality is very good. The, the broguing on the toe cap is nicely done. The upper stitching is not perfect, but it's very, very, very good overall. For this price point, you cannot complain at all. It is excellent. Um, they're not the most, they don't have the most arch support, I would say, but it's still, they're still comfortable. They're, they're fairly flat feeling. For some of you, that might be good. For some of you, that might be bad. For me, I prefer more arch support, but again, I still found these very comfortable and easy to wear over a full day. And my Flame Pandas, not as much, especially in the very beginning. These I could wear for a full day without a problem. Uh, not sure I would take them on vacation. I'd want, there's other pairs that I would choose above these, but again, that's all subjective. I'm just trying to give you sort of a gauge on what you would think with these. Um, for this pair specifically, it's very, very generous in the foot, in the front foot and the toe. Fairly narrow, but not too narrow, like standard in the heel. Nice grip. They actually, I don't have any issues with the fit. They actually fit really nicely on my feet. They're roomy in the toes, like I said, but they're kind of supposed to be. They don't feel loose or like they're flopping around or anything like that. They actually, again, overall comfort on these is very high for me. And again, like I said, if you're looking for something more transitional from sneakers or maybe from Thursdays into some more serious boots, some real boots, then these would be a good example of that. Uh, the toe is structured. That is where we start to get to the part where I don't like as much. So one thing is, again, I don't know who's making their soles. I don't know how good that material is. I don't know where their hardware is from. I don't know how good that is. It could be great. I, I don't know. I haven't had any issues, so that's good. But there are some brands that do a very good job of making sure they source only the best materials for all their stuff. And they may or they may not. It's kind of on me that I didn't do that research at this point. But I gotta get this review out before I sell them and everything like that. And, you know, I guess that's on me, but you know, you can go ask them themselves. I'm sure they'd be happy to tell you. The guy who who, do, who works with them in the United States is easy to talk to, Iron Birds USA. So he's a, he's a good guy, uh, at least from what I know, and he's been easy to deal with and, you know, enthusiastic about the boots. So yeah, quality-wise, they're pretty fantastic. The thing. In comfort, for me, they've been good. I think they're hitting the mark of what they want with this type of leather, with this type of um, construction, this type of feel and comfort. The idea of being a more uh, tough-looking 
still very well made, still durable, but more city-oriented walking boot. They're nailing that, and I think that's awesome that somebody is going for that and then nailing it so well like they are. Where I have a problem with these is the design. I think these are really ugly. Um, not the ugliest. I mean, I think they look too much like an Iron Ranger. Do they look better than an Iron Ranger? Yes, in my opinion, absolutely. There's few boots in my opinion. Why did I sound Canadian right? They said like boots. Um, there are a few boots, in my opinion, that look as ugly as the Iron Ranger. Um, there are some, definitely, but uh, that's their Iron Rangers are up there. I think this is more balanced. I do believe it is. The heel is higher than Iron Ranger. The toe is not as ugly looking as an Iron Ranger, but it does look too much like an Iron Ranger. I just don't think this toe shape is flattering at all. And also the other issue is that the lacing, this the, uh, the, the quarter here, it stops too, too soon. It needs to go a little further out to b add more balance. The weird thing about these boots is I think this is the ugliest pair of boots that they make. I actually think they have some other boot designs that are pretty nice. Um, if you want a more bulbous, like, chunky toe, then their Pittman model, I think, looks a lot better than these. I wish I had, when I got these boots for review, I wish I had gotten those instead. I wish I had waited until those became available. Or I wish I would waited until their uh, monkey boots had been available. Because then the monkey boots look nicer than these, too. I don't really like the Devil Dogs. Those are like, they're kind of more refined, sort of semi-service boot slightly dressy service boots sort of look. I think those are whatever. They're not bad. They're just not my style at all. But if you like that, I'm sure those would be fine for you too. But I actually think like this is their worst design. And the weird thing is that they're old, they, they've shown pictures of their old 5515 design, which I actually think is way better. I actually think the old 5515 looks pretty good. I would have much preferred those. And I even told the guys at Iron Boots, hey, why don't you guys go back to the old version? It looks way better. I don't know anybody else who has this these boots. Um, because they're just not that well designed. But they have other, what I think are pretty cool designs. None of them really speak to me though. That's the biggest thing. Again, I mean, they don't have an engineer that, an, an engineer that I like either. Um, but if the designs appeal to you, I think these are a pretty good option and I'm just happy to see a brand like this doing uh, what they're doing. And they're also doing the, their uh, collaboration with Osmo Boots or however you pronounce it pronounced Osmo, they're making basically making like the ready-to-wear version of those, which is interesting, and that's, uh, I think, a more appealing design to most people, so that's probably a good thing for them to do as well. And if, you know, if those boots are as well-made as these are, then they're going to do a good job on them, because these are well-made. So, yeah, I mean, they're not, uh, I'm not crazy about them, because I'm just not crazy about any of the designs, and I think this one particularly needs a lot of work, but for what they're actually doing, I mean, I definitely support a brand like this doing what they're doing um so yeah I, I think i think they're great um you know some people say they have an issue like I, you know i've given support for these types of brands doing this kind of stuff some people said things like oh yeah but you know the taxes are going to china's government which is evil and it's like yeah xi jinping's evil but i mean most governments are kind of evil and corrupt these days anyway i mean i don't know if you're if you're worried about where tax dollars are going i think you're kind of in the wrong place anyway i don't know it just that's not you're you more of the money is going to people who are making the boots and are doing a real honest work real craft work that kind of stuff that's what you should be caring about okay that that's what really matters here and i just think it's awesome that there's more people doing this i hope we see more of this kind of uh stuff i just personally i wish they would refine their designs a little bit um Oh, I do like the contrast stitching. I think that's kind of, I like that. I like that look. I like how everything's either like this kind of mid-brown, kind of gold-brown brass hardware or the dark brown here. And this, I think these are black outsoles, but they look, it kind of works together. So, but yeah, I mean, they're good boots. Objectively, they're, they're very good boots. Um, against other things in this price range, they did sort of raise their prices and I don't even know where they're at now. I'll probably try to put some text up on the screen to see where they're at right now. But, I mean, motor... I like the design so much more, and I like the leather more, so I would still go with motor in this price range, we're around 600 bucks. Um, but other than that, I'd say these are still pretty good. I, uh, and Flame Panda, you're getting closer to Flame Panda prices now, but these should be re more readily available if you like the, the, the designs from each brand are 
different enough that I don't think that should be too much of a crossover, honestly. But yeah, I think Iron Boots is pretty cool. I really hope we, they come out with some more designs that I might like more. And so I'm excited to see what the future holds for them because I think they're doing the kind of business, the kind of boot making that I'm very excited about and support and the kind of thing that I think this kind of like heritage, you know, vintage clothing revival sort of thing that's still somehow going on um, is supporting and is making possible. So I think that's awesome. So yeah, Iron Boots, uh, these are being sold because I just don't love the design, but they're very good boots in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.